It's 8.30 a.m. An historic moment for the New Bay Bridge is about to begin. Work is about to begin on the cable that will actually hold up or suspend the bridge. Unlike other suspension bridges, it will be one cable wrapped around the bridge like a sling. The 10 million pound cable will be made up of 137 strands, each made of 127 wires nearly a mile long. These men are moving the tip of the first strand, this end labeled E01 into place. W01 is at the end of the nearly mile long strand. Ironworkers begin their climb, some walking up the steep incline, some sprinting to get into position for the cabling operation. The cabling operation on any bridge happens only once in that bridge's lifespan, and this operation is about to start in any minute. December 21st, 2011, and it could take up to six months, and this cabling operation is unique compared to any other suspension bridge. Mark the moment in the history books. The cabling began at 8.58 a.m. With ironworkers and engineers snapping photos as strand number one begins unwinding. And Caltrans Bartnay explains how the process works. The spools are lifted up onto the deck. They're connected onto the hauling system. And then the hauling system, which really works like a giant ski lift, uh, pulls the strand all the way across the bay. Uh, pulls it up the, um, the catwalk system. The catwalk system is built there primarily as a worker platform. We'll have iron workers and engineers out while this uh, work is going on to make sure that we're landing the, uh, the strand where it needs to be. You'll also see that the strand is, is being laid down on a system of rollers to reduce the amount of friction that, um, that takes place as you pull this heavy steel cable, um, steel strand, all the way across the bay. Once we get to the western side, then we have to transfer the strand onto a secondary hauling system so we can wrap it around the back end of the bridge. Now that's unique to this suspension bridge. It's the first time that this has been done. Uh, you can see that the saddle that will hold the, uh, the, the cable ultimately is moving in three different planes because the cable's coming down at an angle uh, to receive it. Then we transfer the strand back onto the original hauling system and take it back the opposite way very similar to how it arrived on the back end of the bridge. We take it all the way up over the top of the saddle. Now that's the, uh, the largest suspension saddle in the world there, and you can see why. It handles two passes of this cable, so it's twice the size of a traditional saddle. Then the strand comes all the way back down to the eastern end of the bridge. And once we've pulled the strand all the way across and we know that we have enough, uh, enough slack on it, then we can tension it. We can actually position it where it needs to be inside of the, the different saddles on the bridge and, and tension it where it ought to be. So you see us going back to the other end, the arms maneuver the strand where it needs to be inside of the saddle. The same type of activity happens at the other saddle locations on top of the tower and also down in the anchorage where the strand is connecting. And then the strand is connected inside the deck. Here you'll see this is the anchorage. So inside of the deck is where we tie this cable down. It's different than other suspension bridges where it goes under the ground. And then this process has to be repeated 137 times so that all of the strands can go into place and we can form what will be the main cable. It's gonna, gonna continue um, for a few months on into this, maybe the very end of the spring towards the summer of, uh, of 2012. Um, and it'll, it'll depend on how the learning curve goes for the contractor. The first few are going to go in very slow. We want to make sure that we work all of any potential bugs out of the system as we start placing. This is also an evening, a nighttime operation as well. All of the surveying that has to take place to make sure that the strand is where it needs to be has to happen at night. And the reason for that is that steel is very susceptible to temperature. So a strand that is partially in sun and partially in shadow will be different lengths on the top than it is on the bottom. And we don't want to survey that. We want to make sure that the temperature is even across the entire strand so it's all the same length. After the cable is installed, engineers will compact it, compressing the hexagon-shaped cable into its final cylindrical form, packed so densely it will look like a solid steel cable. Then it will be rubbed down with a zinc-based paste to prevent corrosion, and then wrapped in an exterior sheet of wire and covered with three coats of paint. The whole process will take the project into 2013. On the New Bay Bridge, Mark Jones reporting.